Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day 18 of 25 Days of Tonalism. The painting I did a study of today uh, is by John Francis Murphy, and unfortunately the only title I have is Landscape. I'm not aware of whether he just titled it Landscape or um, if the title was just not attached. It's, when you get into John Francis Murphy, I mean he was really a pretty top painter in his day, but you know, he, he, there is some stuff online about him. He's not as uh, unknown as some of the other painters we've done in this series, but not as much as there should be considering how great he is really it's a it's a bit of a shame he's he's due for a huge reappraisal and he should really get his own art book too if you ask me no one's asking me but that's what I think um, anyway uh, these are my top three toneless painters I know George and S is at the very top of that but the uh, second and third place slots keep uh, switching back and forth depending on what painting I'm looking at so <laughs> anyway um, now I have been working on the 25 more days of tonalism so you don't worry we're here at 18 that gives us another six more weeks <clears throat> Well, to actually, to tell you the truth, I may end up having to take a hiatus because I was looking at some of the preparations for this uh, museum show are uh, going to take up quite a lot of my uh, limited free time. So we'll see. I'm not worried about it right now. It's still <clears throat> a few months off, but uh, today I was looking into uh, page layout programs for this uh, brochure I want to put together. and. Um, I don't know. I used to use Adobe Illustrator, but I don't want to pay 20 bucks a month for the end of time till the end of time for that. But we're looking at other options, we'll see what happens. I'm sure I could even put possibly just use Photoshop and just do it a page at a time. We'll see how it goes. Um, anyway, you I guess are wondering how's it going in the studio? And uh, today I am in, still in the studio. I'm home for lunch right now. Um, today is Saturday. March 18th, 2017, the day of our Lord. And uh, uh, today I was working on just getting some prints uh, for my little, uh, I have some little boxes of prints in them. So uh, but when I go back, I'm going to be doing a vertical 8x10. And uh, these are these paintings I covered up with a, um, a good coating of uh, burn umber. Uh, and I've done uh, this last week, I did about, I think, four, four paintings. Um, all small, though. I, I had uh, had a policy for the last year of not doing any more 8x10s, but I am doing some 8x10s because uh, these paintings weren't salvageable any other way, and the boards were good, and I thought, well, I'll start small, work my way up. And uh, so I did some new versions of old motifs, and uh, that's going to kind of be a theme. Um, going through. Um, I've been really happy with the way the paintings are coming out and it's it's just been a big big difference. Uh, um, I mean I'm still I still paint the same. I still get the paint down but one of the things I like about painting on this burn number is that it's for one of the you know it kind of helps with another one of my goals which has been to lay down a thicker paint film. Um, and I'm forced to do that because this color is much darker than the burnt sienna that I was working on. Um, in fact, early on in my, especially in my uh, time uh, early on painting here in New Zealand, uh, there are lots of times I was doing very transparent things over the burnt sienna, and which was exacerbated by the fact that I was working with just straight up lead white back then, which is quite translucent and uh, less opaque than titanium. Um, for, for about the last four years I've been working with a mix of lead white and titanium together uh, which gives me the best of both, you know. Um, some of the flexibility of the lead white 
um, and the some of the opacity of the titanium white. So it's, that's been working out, and uh, they seem to be chemically stable. Everything's looking good. Um, so I did uh, eight by I did one eight by eight. I did about three eight by tens. Uh, real happy with the way things are going and, and the different feeling I'm getting, and I'm really debating whether I'm going to get in any dry brushing or even do second passes. I mean, there's a few that I have to go in and do some things like some tree branches and things um, in the second pass, but overall I'm kind of enjoying this sort of a la prima approach and I might just leave it alone and uh, let this whole pass. I certainly would get a lot more paintings done if I did that. and. Um, this has been sparked by the the one that I did several weeks ago now that uh, I did the first one I did on Burn Ember and that's been sitting there. I have not touched the first pass. In fact, I almost sold it in its current condition. So that's sort of the universe to me tapping me on the shoulder. And I'm always busy engaging and asking the uh, universe to support my work and to help me get better, um, you know. Uh, whatever universe means I don't like to use the other word but I do think there's some uh, higher power that uh, helps us and sometimes directs us when we ask for it um, if we don't uh, I don't think it really really cares um, just lets, lets us make our own mistakes but you're probably not here for my uh, spiritual philosophy so we'll get back into painting uh, so like I say I've been laying down this uh, more opaque uh, strokes which is good um, because, uh, you know, oil paint does become more translucent with age. So whatever the color of your ground or whatever's going on underneath those thinner layers of oil paint, um, will, will be coming forward at some point. And it's, uh, it's good to know that. It's valuable to know that, especially because sometimes it's really fun and easy to paint with oil paint, uh, extremely thin. And, uh, you know, maybe it's not as big a deal if you're working with a white ground. I think if you're working with a colored ground, there's a, a good chance that if you paint too thin, um, in a hundred years, your paintings will all be sort of just a tonal variant of the ground. Um, and by too thin, I mean, you know, as thin as you can paint. I, there's there's a little, there are a lot of flexibility with oil paint, and uh, I'm, I'm not too worried about most of the work I've done. Um, because I always paint for some good coverage, but these days I've been wanting to go that extra mile and just kind of lay on a bit. Not really get it full out into impasto, but really get it, lay down a good thick bit of paint. And I have noticed that takes longer by quite a bit uh, to do that. And that's not so bad because um, if that time's all front-loaded into the first color pass and I'm not really doing any other color passes, what's the difference, you know? I'm just being more thorough and uh, trying to get everything done. And the, uh, all the prima, we have to use that word, so that's a great expression, uh, which basically means all in, all in one pass, all in one go. Um, and it's a, you know, a fairly popular uh, painting term. Um... So I'm going to be going back today. I'm going to be doing a vertical uh, 8x10 again with this uh, burnt umber background. And uh, that should take up most of my afternoon. And <clears throat> um, I'll also be working on the, uh, when I get back, I'll be working on our blog post. And uh, I had a fellow uh, ask uh, me for some information about my, my colors that I use. And, you know, so he, he indicated that he was after harmony in his painting. So... Um, I have some, you know, it occurred to me I hadn't really talked or written about Harmony on the blog, so it's a pretty broad subject, and uh, I plan to address a few of those, at least my ideas about it, I mean, what do I know, you know, I just actually have the time, um, you know, I just fly blind and uh, learn from experience, and so, uh, but you can pick up tips, I mean, gosh, uh, I picked up a lot of very valuable tips from a lot of different artists, and that's one of the reasons I do this. If you get one or two tips uh, from me that helps your work, you know, then uh, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm real happy that, uh, you know, 
you got something f from me that, that helps your, your work. And we are all, you know, here to do the best work we can do, I think, as artists. And uh, it's an ongoing process. Anyway, <clears throat> thanks for joining me today. I can see we're getting close to the end of the uh, video here. Uh, you know, click subscribe if you like uh, my videos. I appreciate that. Uh, we're getting close to 200 subscribers, which is pretty exciting. Uh, also, if you like my work, you can go to landscapepainter.co.nz. You can follow my blog there, and there's some of my paintings there. And we'll see you tomorrow. Meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.